Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bapak Ibu, can you hear my voice? Ya Ibu, Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. I can hear you clearly. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Good evening Bapak Ibu kelas Kreatif Learning Partners. Welcome to, welcome to kelas Kreatif Edu Talks. Webinar series organized by Class Kreatif Indonesia. My name is Firda Amalia from SMP Islam Al Falah, Tangerang Selatan, Banten, and I'm excited to be your host for this event. I would like to start off by expressing my heartfelt thanks to all of you for taking the time to join our session. Your participation is greatly appreciated, and we are so glad that you could be here with us today. Based on our GFORM data, we have around 2,000 educators registered to join this station. Wow, that's a very great number. Bapak Ibu, will you please share your name and your city in the Zoom chat? Let me check. Okay. Oh, Ibu Fatia Fitriani Bogor. Oke, okay. thank you Bu Fitria. Pak Asep from Bandung Barat. Ibu Ina from Cimahi. Mm -hmm. Ibu Dea, Ibu Nia, good evening. <laughs> thank you for your participation today. And before we start our station, please allow me to introduce our uh, about our community, Class Kreatif Indonesia. Komunitas Pendidik Kelas Kreatif Indonesia is a part of Yayasan Kelas Kreatif Indonesia, functioning as a personal learning community or PLC. It was uh, it was established in 2008 under the name Education Development Project. The community comprises members such as teachers, lecturers, and tutors, with over 6,000 educators currently participating. One of the core vision of this community is to provide an informal collaboration best professional development platform for educators to share, discuss, learn, and grow together. The expectation is that individuals involved will become lifelong learners, reflecting on their teaching practices and conducting research on creative, innovative and interactive learning theories, strategies and methods, implementing them in the classroom. The ultimate goal is to create an inspiring learning environment. Since 2008, the organization has developed and delivered CPD or Continuing Professional Development for Indonesian teachers and teacher educators through various modes of delivery, including face-to-face -face and online. We welcome all teachers, lecturers, and individuals concerned with education in Indonesia to, do, to be part of Class Creative Indonesia. No registration fee, no registration system. We are all learning partners. Our tagline for 2024 is Semangat Bersinergi Membangun Negeri. Well, dear participants, today's topic is very special as it deals with integrating media literacy into language teaching. We have Bu Intan and Bu Dayang who will deliver a 25-minute presentation each on media literacy. Please note that questions from the participants were submitted earlier through Google Form during the registration process. The speakers will address some of those questions later. However, this evening, all of you have the opportunity to directly ask questions by using the raising hand feature in Zoom during the Q&A session. Don't forget that you have the opportunity to win the 2024 agenda. The lucky participant will be announced at the end of the session. Well, this is the e-certificate of attendance is available upon request with a fee. The 
the funds raised will be used to support programs in class creative Indonesia, such as books in a box. Please note that this is optional. Bapak Ibu, joining us today are two incredible speakers who are experts in their respective field. First, we have Bu Intan, who is an English lecturer at Ikip Siliwangi. And next, Budayang Suryani, who is a teacher at SMA N1 Balikpapan. Bu Intan and Budayang, it is an absolute pleasure to have you with us today. Good evening, Bu Intan, Budayang. Good evening, Good evening Bu. Ibu Pirda. Hello, how are you, Ibu Intan, Semua. Budayang? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. That's great. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Okay. So, without any further ado, please welcome Bu Intan. Thank you very much, Ibu Firda, uh, for letting me to uh, to share actually to the experts, all experts maybe here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I only I only want to share a little information in line with uh something that I already uh, applied in my class. Yeah. Okay, Bapak dan Ibu, I'm going to uh, greet everyone here. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, Bapak dan Ibu. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Um, now I hope that Bapak dan Ibu still uh, awake, yeah. <laughs> um, before we uh, we face um this night, and um uh, the first of all, I'm going to say uh, hi to Ibu Dayang. Also, Ibu Dayang Suryani. Hello, Ibu. Hello, Bu Hi, Ibu Dayang is my partner here. Nice <laughs> Ibu Firda. Uh, thank you very much. And I'm going to share the screen, Bapak dan Ibu. Okay. Let me uh, show the slideshow. Okay. Um, it's not a nasty system, yeah, Bapak dan Ibu. <laughs> uh, first of all, I, I want to... Uh, I want to show that uh, I do not want to show that this is me, but uh, it is because I don't have an, uh, the other the other picture in my laptop. Yeah, <laughs> only that picture. Okay, Bapak dan Ibu, uh, thank you very much for the time uh, and uh, the opportunity. Uh, on today's occasion, I'm going to share in line with the and the topic for our uh, today's sharing session, the topic is the integrating media literacy into language teaching. So in line with the uh, talking about the media literacy itself, and uh, in line with um, connecting the media literacy with the language teaching. So, um, and also based on my experiences uh, using the media, and I choose the digital storytelling as the media literacy and language teaching. So uh, I know that uh, Bapak and Ibu here already familiar with this one. Yeah? So we can share uh, together with, uh, in line with the digital storytelling. Okay, hello. <laughs> okay, my name is Intan Satriani. Uh, again, I introduce myself, yeah. Bapak dan Ibu, I'm from Ikip Siluwangi. I'm part of Ikip Siluwangi and also part of Class Kreatif Indonesia. Uh, so today we are going to, I don't know whether the donut uh, can be delicious or not. <laughs> it depends on Bapak dan Ibu who, uh, who will um, take the donut make the donut uh, delicious or not so uh in creating a donut at the end so uh here we have a menu of the presentation the first one is how do you divine the storytelling and digital storytelling and it is related with the definition itself um what is storytelling and also what is the difference between storytelling and digital storytelling and the second is what is the integration between digital storytelling and media literacy. Why media, lit media literacy is come up here? Because media literacy is one of uh, one of the um, area in our discussion today. And the third is what are the stages incorporating digital storytelling in teaching literacy? And the fourth, or maybe this is the last menu, 
how to integrate it into language teaching. So if we talk about how uh, it will be uh, in line with the steps in implementing um, digital storytelling in language teaching. Okay. Um, how do you define storytelling and digital storytelling? The first one, Bapak dan Ibu, uh, I want to share um, in line with the storytelling itself. So everyone knows here that, um, and also taken from Abu Nada 2013, that we, uh, we can talk about storytelling as the one of the simplest form of imaginative activity, which uses the same plot characters and events of the text in the shape of narrative genre. So, Bapak dan Ibu, I want to, is that okay if I want to know <laughs> or uh, make a communication with Bapak dan Ibu here? Have you ever heard storytelling before, Bapak dan Ibu? I'm sure the, the answer is yes. <laughs> okay, would you please to share on the chat box, Bapak dan Ibu, thank you very much. All right. Yes, thank you very much. Snow White, yeah. Uh, I try to see from Pak Asep Rahmat, yeah, sure. Ibu Nia, yes, yes. Yes, Snow White, yes. In line with the narrative text, yeah. Bapak Ibu, yeah. Good job. Yes, yep, yes. And sure, yes. Okay. Sang Kuryang, yes. Okay, so I'm going to end up the presentation. <laughs> okay, not yet, Bapak dan Ibu. It's only the sharing. Thank you very much. So we can, um, I also can get something from Bapak dan Ibu here, yeah, in line with the uh, narrative text itself and how to implement uh, storytelling. Okay, the giving tree. Sure, uh, when I was a kid, my mom used to tell me a story and Putri Tangguk from Kerinci, Jambi. Yeah, Indonesia has lots of, uh, or many kinds of, uh story especially for legend yeah bapak dan ibu good job and timun mas wow that's good the story of Krakatau. thank you very much bapak dan ibu uh for sharing yes um storytelling if we talk about this one if, if we talk about the imaginative activity uh storytelling is a kind of um interesting activity especially for i think not only children but also um, the teenager, yeah, uh, really close with the story, uh, story itself. So this is the definition of storytelling taken from Abu Nada. And the next one, if we talk about uh, storytelling, it is an old practice of telling stories that has been the primary oral language. Now, the, the emphasis here, uh, in line with the storytelling itself with the oral language and it is taken from Lifo and Ritz 19 and uh, 60, uh, 86. And the odd practice uh, of telling stories, it can be also uh, used to pass the information. Okay, now we move to the digital story itself, Bapak dan Ibu. Um, why digital story? Uh, is come up why digital story is come up uh, nowadays because uh, as we already know as we already know together that our uh, for the teachers our students is, is the they are digital native in a digi uh, they are digital native so um, we as a teacher we need to uh, we need to it's like to see or to match the learning activity into their uh, world, yeah. So digital storytelling also can be used as one of the media. So why digital storytelling used as the uh, one of the media? Because taken from the center of digital storytelling, the center of for digital storytelling itself, this is the uh, the main or the pioneer of the digital storytelling between uh, John Lambert and the late Dana Ashley, and also taken from Robin 2008. And in line with this digital storytelling, with the rapid development of technology, 
the Lambert and actually help the center of digital storytelling to create the digital storytelling movement as the new version of digital of storytelling. And also it is used as the integration between computer technology and multimedia elements with storytelling or uh, teaching and learning. Okay, Bapak dan Ibu, uh, I also need to, yeah, Pak Asep, we as a teacher should be friendly with digital or technology. Yes, Bapak, I agree with that one. Thank you very much. Um, Bapak dan Ibu, uh, if we talk about digital story digital storytelling, so uh, we have, uh, I'm sure that we are together Um close with the application used to uh, to create uh, the the story or the digital story so bapak dan ibu would you please to share kind of uh, application uh, application that can uh, that can facilitate to create the video here through chat box thank you very much kanva yeah pak asep kanva yeah. I really interest with Canva because I um it is hard for me to create my own design yeah. <laughs> Sorry. CapCut. Yeah, Ibu Marjani, yes, CapCut. And yeah, CapCut is really good for editing. Uh the video. Thank you Ibu Benny. Ibu Henny, thank you. Oh, WPS office, YouTube. <laughs> yeah, for uh presenting ya, Bu ya. Yeah. Thank you very much. Ibu Nia. Kain Master, Poutun, ya, Ibu Astri, Filmora, <laughs> Bing AI, Kain Master, Chat GPT to get the information, ya, Ibu. Thank you. And Canva can help TikTok most, ya. TikTok, ya, Bapak, ya. Oke, okay, thank you very much. Protagon, Xpli, World War. Wah, thank you very much, Bapak dan Ibu. I use Canva. Uh, for preparing uh, my media and we can do many kinds of media literacy through Canva. Yeah, um, Victory, thank you very much. Um, from all of the uh, the kind of uh, application that can be used to create Canva, thank you very much, Ibu, uh, to create the video. Uh, me personally, I, uh, I really close to Uh, Canva and also Filmora ya Bapak Ibu ya <laughs> oke okay. maybe Bapak dan Ibu also uh, quite close with that one and also already mentioned uh, Filmora previously thank you very much Canva presentation Canva video oke okay. Bapak Ibu still here Assalamualaikum <laughs> oke okay, ya oke okay, Bu Intan uh, if you talk about the uh, definition it's quite uh, it's quite too long Although it is short, yeah, okay. Bapak dan Ibu know it, it is continue. What is the integration between digital storytelling and media literacy? Nah, now we uh, we come up with the media literacy. Yes, Bapak dan Ibu. So, uh, in line with the media literacy itself, so um, digital storytelling allows students and educators to enhance their information gathering problem solving Uh, in which part of problem solving here? So while the students talk um, or work in group, they can solve the problems and they can share their ideas. Um, because in, for example, in a group consists of five people and they have their own uh, ideas, brilliant ideas. So uh, they have to find uh, which one is the, the best that, that have to be uh, applied in the story or have to be uh, choose, uh, have to be chosen. And uh, it can be one of the problem solving skills used there uh, on, on that uh, point. And also, yeah, facilitates students' ability to work collaboratively in team. And the next one is allow them to construct. Now, this is uh, why I put the blue one here, because it is in line with the literacy itself. So um, there is there are lots of uh, definition in line with the literacy. So I here in this sharing session, I'm going to specify um, the definition of literacy uh, focuses on reading and writing so the digital storytelling here 
um, here taken from Robin, allow them, allow the students to construct their own meaning through personally uh, meaningful writing. So at the end, after they read the example and at the end, they meet in a group to create their own product. And <clears throat> the last, and allow users to create a social community around the stories. Uh, Bapak dan Ibu, uh, in the different forms of literacy, which bring the different cultural forms now here and also can be seen in the example of the students. I think in which um, I can see here Bapak dan Ibu from different areas. Yeah. I cannot. Nah, I can see here from the chat box from Bogor. From Bandung Barat, from Cimahi, from Kalimantan Barat. Me too. I'm I'm also from Kalimantan Barat, ibu. And the story uh, uh is like batu betangkup ya, bu ya, ibu Nia ya, <laughs> batu betangkup ya, bu. Nah, uh, so the students maybe they have uh they they can create their own their own story and. Uh, they can take the cultural from it, uh, from it. So they can create their own. Uh, for example, like Patrick in Instagram, we can see the example later, Bapak dan Ibu. <laughs> so the focus is on cultural forms, literacy of digital literacy, a uh, digital storytelling is uh, obviously different from that of say feature film and a novel or an uh, an oral history testimony. And the process involved in the story circle provides rich opportunity to develop media literacy. The first one is the activities involving reading images. Nah, so the first one, the students need to uh, see the image because um, the uh, it can be said as the digital storytelling is a set of images nah, uh, to encourage participants to squeeze the most meaning from the limited amount of images the form demands. For example, um, that can be used in the classroom like uh, is rooted in classic media education approaches to denotation or connotation exercises. It can have, so from the image from the images used and the students can see which one is the uh, or it which one is uh, denotation and also which one is connotation and the next one is a word game also it is can be taken from a short movie and this is uh, also can be encountered questions of point of view and it can be um it can be a group or maybe if the the students in a class only consists of less than 10. So it can be or less than five, maybe the private class. Yeah? Uh, so it can be individually. The act of construction within a set of formal constraints can lead to broader questions of form or content and genre. So it is also uh, can raise students um, problem solving so from the questions they can solve which one is the content and uh, which genre here and a part of genre so see from the construction of the text and bapak dan ibu so in line with the stages bapak dan ibu um what do you usually uh, do Yes, Pak Asep. Yes, Bu Intan, a lot of story come from Kalimantan Barat. I'm from Sintang, the legend of Bukit Kelam. Yeah, thank you very much, Ibu. So Indonesia is, and yes, it depends on the students' learning style. Yeah, thank you very much, Bapak. Yes, agree uh, with that one, Bapak. And what are the stages incorporating digital storytelling and teaching literacy? So talking about the stages itself, um, I think... Uh, also, I'm sure that Bapak dan Ibu already uh, implement it in the classroom. Um, here, I take from three uh, sources. The first one is the preparation, production, and presentation. And uh, for the material basis here, I took uh, the activities 
preparation, production, and presentation. And for the next one, uh, process and production taken from uh, Danford, and also this one taken from the seven, seven steps of digital storytelling taken from Rambert. This is only the uh, another example of uh, implementing digital storytelling. <clears throat> So the first one, Bapak dan Ibu, preparation, uh, production, presentation. So uh, Bapak dan Ibu, would you please to share um, what is the one of one, only one, the activity that you usually, uh, that Bapak dan Ibu usually uh, apply in the classroom, especially in the uh, presentation of uh, reading or writing activity. Would you please to share Bapak dan Ibu? It will be uh, grateful for me, amazing information for me. Thank you very much. So for me, yes, if uh, Pak Surya, yeah, production, yes. In the production uh, section, yeah, Pak. Especially for me, myself, um, that also has been collected in a book. Uh, in the presentation, uh, I asked the students to, it is 2015, uh, I asked the students to post their uh, their product to uh, Facebook. And uh, how about you, Bapak dan Ibu? In the presentation section, is that uh, YouTube or maybe Instagram is uh, popular now? Ibu Kori, we watch video to understand uh, to understanding the text. Yes, it easy students a lot. Yes, watch the video. Watch the video in the preparation, ya bu ya. In the beginning, ya bu ya. Thank you very much. I made my students mini mini stage from carton a uh, paper and use a paper puppet to help them present the narrative. Ah, great idea, Ibu. In a production, Ibu, yeah. Good job. Thank you very much, Ibu Nani, for sharing. A text with supporting images. Instagram, yeah, Ibu Henny, thank you very much. Short video uploaded uh, in their Instagram, yeah. Thank you very much. In Instagram Reels, thank you very much, Bapak. The students present their stories in front of the class uh, for presenting. Thank you very much, Ibu Nunik. Thank you. I often ask my students to post their work on their social media, such as Instagram and TikTok. Thank you very, thank you very much, Bapak dan Ibu. Yeah. Uh, so nowadays we can see that uh, we have uh, lots of media, social media that can be uh, that can be support the teaching and learning section, especially for sharing digital uh, storytelling. Thank you very much, Bapak dan Ibu. That was grateful. Thank you very much. And at we can, okay. Ibu or Bapak Nizar, yeah. Thank you very much for sharing. Some uh, Sometimes I also ask my students to create another ending that possible, mm -hmm. TikTok education. Thank you very much, Bapak dan Ibu. <clears throat> and the next one, and taken from the Danforth and Jenkins uh, 2014, the process, uh, they took the process of production, finding the articulate and personal voice, crafting, yeah, as mentioned previously, uh, creating puppet, and also uh, from creating puppet. Yeah, and present the puppet, yeah, Bu Francisca, students told by using puppet, yeah, crafting, and also uh, ask the students to uh, write their, uh, or uh, draw their story through cartoon paper, carton paper, thank you very much, Ibu. That was uh, part of crafting the stories or creating meaning in a short form. It is taken from Danforth and Jenskins, and also the impact. So in line with the impact, uh, they say that the impact is the understanding stories as text and collection. So um, impact here is the uh, the presentation and the crafting is the production. And also process of production also can be present, uh, preparation and production. And here we go. Uh, Bapak dan Ibu for the next one, the seven steps of digital storytelling. 
So it is taken from the Lambert. The first one is owning your insights, owning your emotions, finding the moment, and seeing your story, hearing your story, assembling your story, and sharing your story. Thank you very much, Bapak dan Ibu. Okay, Bapak dan Ibu, it's only one. Uh, I'm going to close uh, the stop share. I'm going to stop share. Okay, Bapak dan Ibu, hello. <laughs> okay, because uh, now it is um, quite uh, 8 o'clock, almost 8 o'clock, yeah. <laughs> so, Bapak dan Ibu, if you, uh, okay. If I say up, so please put your hands up. And if I say, uh, sorry, if I say up, please put your hands, two hands down. And please, I uh, if I say up and uh, down, and uh, please put your hands up. Okay, yeah, Bapak dan Ibu? Okay, semangat Bapak dan Ibu. Okay, now, all right, okay. One, two, three. Down. Yay! <laughs> One more. Uh, three more. Yeah. Okay. Um. Up. Okay, Budiana. Okay, <laughs> that's out uh, out of the box activity. And oh yeah, Paromada. Yeah, hands up. Yeah, good job. Thank you very much. And the last. Down. Yes, Bu Firda, Bu Ase, eh, Pak Asep, and Bu Diana, thank you. And also the others, Bapak-Ibu, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, give applause for us. Thank you, Bapak dan Ibu. Okay, now I'm, go I'm going to continue to share the screen again, ya, Bapak dan Ibu. <laughs> okay. Nah, the next one is how to integrate those uh, information into language teaching. And uh, the the first one is the digital storytelling. It is taken from Satriani, 2019, and uh, the the steps uh, or the the steps or the technique used is a preparation, production, and also presentation. <laughs> For the preparation, uh, the activities, the first one is that introduces and shows uh, the example about digital storytelling to the students. Then students will be grouped. In, uh, in eight groups consists of eight people here and um, although maybe uh, we sometimes we can't see the students uh, they do not know their role in the group so here uh, they have their own role uh, so the leader can choose which one is the writer director producer and actor as uh, in a filmmaking. And in this stage, students have brainstorm ways to find uh, meaning, point of view, or emotional connections of their own. And after that, uh, the students also collaborated, uh, depicts the language features and gener uh, generic structures of narrative text, because this is the main, as mentioned, if, uh, if the teacher want to ask, uh, or invite the students to play game together um, in line with the constructions of the text. So uh, they, first of all, they have to know first uh, the language features and also the generic structure of the narrative text itself, whether it is um, legend or fable and so on and so forth. Students and teacher determine audience and location and how the story will be presented. And the last students decide the topic by themselves. They should insert local content. So as mentioned previously, uh, in the digital storytelling for each country, the, the different or the uniqueness is don't forget to insert it, the culture forms on the story. Nah, this is the example, Bapak dan Ibu. Uh, the students, uh, we know that uh, we need to learn from the students, yeah. Uh, that's out of the expectation. Uh, the examples of student story map, they can do what they want. Uh, they can choose, for example, Patrick or Chop, uh, Chepot, Chepot, yeah. Chepot, and also uh, the other 
uh, the other social media that already happening. And now the students uh, took uh, Patrick and also Instagram as their uh, topic. And also don't forget to uh, broken down it. The first one is time, place, the characters, who are uh, the characters and also moral value, social media uh, used, and also uh, the media. The media to create uh, the story or digital story is handphone and also the time of the story in the afternoon and also the social media is Instagram. And also this one, uh, the live doll, Lulu. They choose this uh, the title by themselves, no burden. <laughs> and the next one is digital storytelling production. Each group starts to write a narrative text based on the topic and collaboratively, uh, the guidance already provided on the board or uh, nowadays we can use many kinds of media to share the guidance collaboratively using word processors also. And it is taken from Senamo, Fraser, and Zoo et al. And this is the example of um, students, students' uh, first draft. And I thought that the students, they are clever <laughs> and good. And I think uh, they can create it. Um, uh, sorry, it's not the first, but this is the third draft. Uh, the third draft of uh, their writing. I'm sorry. The third draft of their writing. So they can, um, uh, it, it can be seen that they has uh, their own comprehension in line with the English comprehension. And the next one is the presentation. Presentation is the activities. Um, it is taken from Cinema. They post their work to the Facebook because it is uh, 2015, Bapak Ibu. So I prefer to, uh, and okay, I make a deal with them, which one, which media they want to, uh, to share. So I uh, provide some media, so they choose uh, some profile, uh, social media, so they choose Facebook as the platform to see the response. And each group give command of their friends uh, video through Facebook. And we have some chats here. Ah, thank you very much, Ibu Aiha. I have ever asked the students to submit the assignment in Instagram. Yeah, Ibu, thank you for sharing. I often ask my students to post their work on the social media, YouTube channel, quizzes, game, word wall, Padlet. Thank you very much, Ibu. TikTok education. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Cepot and Dewala in Sundanis Puppet. Yeah, thank you, Pasep. Okay, thank you very much, Bapak dan Ibu, for the enlightening uh, ideas. Nah, this is the example of their uh, writing. And for the, the first, they uh, they create the, uh, they draw the picture by themselves. And for the second, they took uh, from um, Big Story or uh, Google, yeah? Bapak dan Ibu. Nah, here is the example, Bapak dan Ibu. I'm going to show. We still have time, yeah, Bu Firda, yeah. <laughs> okay, because uh, Bapak dan Ibu yeah, here, <laughs> uh, are enthusiastic, so I'm happy to uh, to have a discussion with Bapak dan Ibu here. Okay. Eh, sorry, Bapak dan Ibu, I'm going to... All right. Wait. I thought uh, Bapak dan Ibu also already applied it and this is uh, the example, one of the example of students' uh, result Bapak dan Ibu in line with the digital storytelling. Is it audible, Ibu? Bapak? Not yet. Not yet ya, Bapak Ibu? There's no voice. There's no voice. In that. Okay. Uh, okay, it's lost. 
love the sound. Does Bapak Ibu can hear the audio? No sound, Bu. Not yet, ya, Pak Asep. Oh. Oke, okay, thank you very much, Bapak Ibu. No, no. Oke. Okay. Um. Hmm. Still, there is no voice, man. Ya. Yeah. Thank you. Bintang, uh, still maybe try you to... can share it in the WhatsApp group. Ah, <laughs> Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I'm going to share forward. the link. Thank you very much. Ibu. I love you too. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you for the ideas, Ibu. Yeah. Ah, uh, here is the ring. This contains a lot of story from Indonesia. Yeah. Thank you, Bintan. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, this is the students. Uh, students product. One of the students product. So, oh, yeah. uh, they write. Uh, uh, and they created uh, oh. by themselves uh, yes, originally. Thank you yeah. very much. And the link already provided here, Bapak dan Ibu, ya, on the text box. And I'm really sorry that uh, I have uh, personally have a problem with the sharing audio. Sorry. And the next one is, this is the example. Uh, from one of the also the example of digital storytelling um hello fish meat and this is uh, a a set of or a college of uh picture or photographs okay thank you and i know yes uh Pak Asep, that student's product I, I also really amazed with the students nowadays. <laughs> They are brilliant and also creative, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. So the students made by themselves and then upload to the YouTube, right? Sure, 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 you both. Right. Sure. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, for... Uh, uh, I thought also Bapak dan Ibu can find yeah the old yeah. uh old students also can show their uh surprise <laughs> can give surprise, surprise to us in line with the their uh product yeah the result uh Bapak dan Ibu here is the here are the links of the digital storytelling uh. Uh, I thought Bapak dan Ibu can find um, a trillion uh, examples on the on Bah Google or Prof Google, uh, and also this is only uh, a uh, a piece of cake example uh, in line with the links. The first one is uh, taken from the University of Wollongong. <clears throat> this is the link, and uh, I'm I'm going to share after this one. And also this is one of the uh the application used mind master uh, i thought bapak dan ibu also quite uh, also familiar with this one yeah mind master to create uh, the mind map of the story and also uh, this is the understanding of digital literacy the article uh, from academia edu and also this is the it is not a promotion ya bapak ibu <laughs> this is uh, a book uh, storytelling and digital storytelling uh theory and practice for educators uh, right written by satriani 2019 and so bapak dan ibu to close our starting session for today so uh which one do you prefer that's based on uh bapak dan ibu uh to choose and which one uh that really really suitable for our students Thank you. Thanks so much, Bapak dan Ibu. Thank you, Bu Firda. Thank you, Bu Intan, for insightful presentation. <laughs> well, Bapak Ibu, we still have uh, one more presenter. So please welcome Bu Daya. Thank you so much, Bu Firda and Bu Intan, welcome. for a very incredible, incredible presentation. <laughs> okay. Let me share my presentation at the beginning. Okay. Okay. Can you see my presentation? Bu Intan? Yes, Ibu. Audience. Yes, Ibu. Clear, Ibu. 
Oke, okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, thank you so much for letting me here to present my few points and class action related to the theme today, which is integrating media literacy to into language teaching. Okay, well, actually there are so many kinds of actions that we teachers really do in our classroom, but I'm going to tell some of it um, related to my teaching journey and also experiences. And I'm sure that all great teachers here are familiar with that, but it's not a mistake if we share each other's perspective related to this idea and this topic. So later on, we're going to learn together. We're going to share each other's perception and related to the uh, literacy media to be implemented in our English classroom. Okay, first of all, thank you so much Pak Dadan and all teams of Kelas Kreatif who let me again to share ideas and actions. And also thank you for moderator, my friend, Bu Intan. It was amazing to see you presenting this idea and I got a lot from you. Um, and I'm going to implement it in my class later. Okay, well, um, media literacy is the ability to access, analyze, evaluate, create, and act using all form of communication. And this is exactly taken from Dyer, J 2017, April 14. Well, let me analyze the, the word access, analyze, evaluate, create, and act. Uh, I'm going to uh, just focus on create and act because this is what I have implemented in my classroom. And my students really like to do action and really like to create things that they have to do in the classroom. And um, uh, according to Weinberg, so 2014, so we teachers, he, uh, he urges educators, including us teachers, to teach media literacy and empower students to engage critically with information and amplify their voices as creators and digital authors. And teaching media literacy is aimed to prepare students for the present and future. So when I told this to my students, uh, I was like, oh, wow, okay. This literacy media is aimed to prepare your present and future. So it means, ma'am, so if we learn about media literacy, so it means we're going to welcome a good future. Yes, for sure. I tell my students like that and my students, okay, ma'am, from now on, I'm going to be like a literate person who is busy reading, who is busy writing, and who is busy creating. Yeah, that's what the students should do. And my students are like, okay, ma'am, I'm going to try. And then uh, related to what exactly the media literacy itself, which is stated by Weinberg, 2014. So I just like to highlight some uh, points that we teachers should know what is exactly inside my class or inside our classroom. Okay, I'm going to discuss four points for tonight. Uh, the first one is situation and then challenge, action and reflection. That's what we did as a teacher in the classroom. So is my presentation clear here? Is that clear for you guys? Yes, Ibu. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, for the situation, I'm sure that all teachers have uh, the same situation like I have right now, that every student has unique talents, abilities, goals, challenges, and circumstances. As a teacher, we have to uh, put the students in a very mentally comfortable situation when teaching them. Um, at the beginning, at the beginning or at the start, uh, at the starting points, I'm trying to let my student like, okay, we have to be happy uh, to begin our teaching material, and we just like to play games. Uh, I mean, like I just want to bring the happiness atmosphere in my classroom so that my student will enjoy will uh, attend my class sincerely and happily because I'm sure that when they're happy, they are easy to follow all kinds of lessons that I serve them to learn. And uh, as we know, maybe my classroom or maybe another teacher's classroom that 
uh, showing like many students learn by seeing or doing. So I just like to limit my, my talk. I just want to facilitate my students to talk a lot and to act a lot. Not like I'm dominating my classroom. I talk a lot from the beginning till the end. So my student will work a lot than me. That's what I did. So this is the situation that I found in my classroom. I'm sure that maybe some teachers here have, have the same uh, classroom situation like I have. And this is exactly um, uh, the, the challenge that I need to face related to uh, implementing the literacy media or media literacy to my students, where right? some students in my classroom, okay, only understand basic English. So even though they are 11th grader, um, still, they only know words, they only know sentences, or maybe understand uh, a part of the text. So not the full text, but only a part of the text, maybe like an introductory paragraph. So they only understand that, but the content, maybe they are still um, try to learn that deeply. That's why I'm trying to uh, welcome them. Okay, whatever capability you have, I welcome you and you are my students. Okay, so please, uh, in uh, related to the students' understanding of English, I let myself uh, to be in the same position like them. I'm not like, you know, I'm a teacher and I should talk English all the time from the beginning till the end, but I'm trying to, to let for, uh, for some situation or some moments, I'm trying to speak Bahasa to make my students possible but not dominantly uh, speaking Bahasa from the beginning to the end, but okay, okay. Uh, do you wanna ask me a question? Can I ask you in Bahasa Indonesia? Ma'am, of course, of course you may ask me. But then for the next time, maybe I also need to motivate them that you can speak English. Okay, maybe 50 Bahasa and 50 English. So it all matters since you are matter. So uh, with the basic English that my students have, I need to uh, to be side by side with my student. Okay, as you can see this picture, right? This are the student that needs my attention a lot. That's why I come closer to them. They don't want to talk. They just like smiling. Okay, ma'am, okay. So we're going to sing a song. Yeah, they just smile at me and I'm happy. I'm happy, even though they just keep smiling. Okay, and don't know what to do, but they are there. We have to we have to understand they are there, they are there they exist and we have to come closer with them do some approachment and the second one is low performing students appreciate being treated as intelligence capable people so even though maybe they only uh, understand basic English but as teach as a teacher we still need to appreciate them so we treat them as intelligent capable people not like letting uh, um, letting my students or letting them to speak a lot. Maybe we just mention or give a question, which is very simple, which is very easy to understand. And we give them for the low performing students. Not too many questions, but simple question when they can answer. For example, what is my favorite juice? They can answer, okay, mango juice, ma'am. Okay, good job. At least they speak English. And that's what, what I thought. Uh, I should I should appreciate uh, appreciate those low performing students as my intelligent and capable student. And the next one is rules about the rules about things we will never tolerate, like hitting, verbal bullying, and body shaming. And this is what happened in some school around Indonesia, and also in my city Balikpapan. Some bully, uh, verbal bullying always happens in classroom or maybe outside the classroom, but we are there, we, we heard we heard that one. Some students like doing verbal bullying, like giving bad words, dirty words, like, okay, you know, what are the examples, but we don't need to say that because this is educational talk. So uh, uh, this is what we have to consider thinking about that. Uh, some students like telling that easily. So as teachers, we have to, uh, we have to tell them that this is not allowed. So what you have to tell in the classroom is good words, not bad words. Things that I need to highlight this, that the situation and the challenge that we need to do as teachers. So please think about these three challenges 
and we have to solve this problem. Okay, this is not just a joking. Some students like saying, ma'am, this is only a joke, but telling backwards is not a joke. And this is unacceptable. Okay, do you follow me? Okay, ma'am. Uh, so again and again, and I told also to my students, the, uh, there is no tolerance. There is no tolerance for horrible bullying. Okay, let's take a look at, keep an eye. Keep an eye the, 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 uh, to the students who might do it for some reasons. And we have to try hard how to make it like they didn't do it forever. And this is our job. That's why regarding to those situations, um, trying to put the media literacy, the media literacy to overcome, to overcome the problem that might happen in my class or might happen in another school, in another classes, this is it. Okay, so related to the media literacy itself, so this is what actually I got from many sources. I'm trying to just conclude it and this is it, the first idea, how to make students aware that verbal bullying is uh, cannot be tolerated in the classroom or outside the classroom. Okay, um, maybe this is simple, this is simple. Okay, you just make a, a mini paper, mini paper, and you just put it in an envelope related to uh, uh, the number of students. Maybe if one class consists of 35 students, I provide them with 35 cards related to this behavior card. So what is it for? Uh, this is used to remind the students if they do this, they're going to get my lovely message. <laughs> let's say uh, let's say the <laughs> behavior card. Okay, stop and think, how am I acting right now? Okay, this is like uh, the student is going to read Okay, by the time we give them this card, they're going to read that and they're going to think of it. Oh my God, I did something and I make my teacher getting frustrated. Okay, and then see what happened next. <clears throat> okay, and then this is the part. This is the part too. Uh, your present behavior is not acceptable. Please be more polite. It's just about the paper, okay? It's just not like we are talking a lot, we're grumbling a lot to the students. It's sometimes useless, so we give them paper. This is literacy, but this is simple, okay? But uh, not most, uh, not all the teachers like to do it. They provide it a lot. I just like to do it, and when I have no class to teach, so I make it, I try to find out cardboards, like, uh, okay, useless cardboard and then I I cut it into several pieces and I'm trying to type something on the computer and then I print it out I put these sentences and it's like okay it works with my students and they're not going to do something which is like uh, violence to uh, distract the students and other students or might be bully other friends so this is only simple way hopefully it works in our classroom and then this is the uh, the next action that we are talking about. So every year I taught my students to read two books. One book uh, is talking about uh, things happen, things which is uh, happening and it becomes trending and viral and we have to discuss it. Or maybe the book which is related to the reality that we face right now, this is it. Maybe you can take a look at the the video or just uh, enjoy the video. What are they doing exactly for this reason? Okay. Okay, wait. I need to stop share for a while um, because my connection is a little bit la laggy and I need to share my screen again. Okay, wait, okay. Okay, let me check this one. Okay. Present the materials okay, for can you hear the, the audible? Yes, Ibu. Okay. Audible. Children. Okay, wait. <laughs> wait. <laughs> okay. Wait. <laughs> I need to share a little bit. Uh, okay. Um, this one. Present the materials for one hour study. 
Presentation. My name is Gibel Dora Mas My name is My name is Karisa Naya. My name is Bila Rehman Kismatul. My name is Rizky. My name is Fadil. My name is Alpira. My name is Distiani Mikaela Aurora Maseko. My name is Nadia Oktaviana Ramadhani. Of violence against children. This incident is occurred in Balikpapan. The news involved a case of physical abuse by a domestic assistant named MR. Give us an example of emotional abuse on children. Question is, what role does education play in raising awareness about the impact of violence on children? My question is, what sign of violence in children do you need to pay attention to? Children, so we can do by doing some socialization for our generation because it's important for us to know What's the impact for the children? Mm -hmm. Because uh, the impact it, it can make the children like mm -hmm. have a uh, emotional damage, mm -hmm. have a mental break. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important for us to do mm -hmm. some socialization mm -hmm. first, so mm -hmm. our generation can know that violence against children is so important and it's so be dangerous. Mm -hmm. Kind of violence that we need to pay attention to. Okay, that's exactly the example how my students like doing discussion about the book that they have read. Uh, they're not going to read. Aku udah makan, Pak. Uh, excuse me? Hey, Firda, can you help me? Okay. Uh, to, uh, okay. To mute the speaker, maybe for a while, and then we're going to have a question and answer later, yeah? Okay? Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, well, this uh sometimes when i told my student to read okay guys you have to read a book okay and they asked me again is it individual assignment ma'am uh, no of course you have to read together because uh now you have to work collaboratively with your friends and i told them and they're happy when i told them read together with your friends one book should be read together with your friends oh yeah 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 so we're not going to read it alone ma'am okay yes yes i want to make you happy Okay, so my students read it together. Uh, we divided the chapter into several students, right? They are suggesting one another, hey, what have you read? Hey, what have you read? Uh, read? Okay, and what about you? What about you? So they uh, they just like to tell what, page, what pages that they have read before and they're telling uh, what exactly the content of the book with one another. And it was fun to see them uh, understanding the book together. Uh, this is like a strategy. For me, it's just like a strategy because with, uh, if I come to them, okay, uh, Willard, we have to read this book. Carissa, you have to read this book. Maybe it will spend more hours or more days or maybe more weeks to finish one book. So when I come closer to them, read a book together and they're happy happy reading and happy presenting it. And for me, uh, this is good. Uh, this is what my students need. And I should, uh, I should uh, stand beside them and hear what they want exactly. And they can do it. Even though in presenting, some students still dominant working, they answer the question dominantly and others just like present it by reading. But I'm sure by doing this together, they can learn a lot from their friends, okay? And then what about another action? So oh, that's exactly the first action that I do related to the action, what actually the theory said. So you have to, to create something and to do action. So this is what I'm trying to implement it in my classroom. And then the next one is, um, I also like uh, uh, like telling my student uh, to go to the library together with me. So I'm not going to let them, hey, you guys go to the library. I'm not, okay, no, but okay, come on, let's go to the library together. And then we have to read whatever book we want to read. It can be easy book or maybe motivational book. Okay, it's all up to you. And then after that, I'm asking my students also to tell at least one, two, or three pages, what they have read about the book, and this is the example. Uh, yeah, okay, uh, what do you think about our activity today? Okay. Our activity is fun, and I'm enjoying it. You're 
Okay, um, let me highlight some important points why I do this to my students. Okay, let's say I have two students. One can speak English well and another one can just speak English, uh, can just speak basic English. Uh, that's why I give them like, okay, from now on, just tell me what is exactly the pages that you have read. And he told me in Bahasa Indonesia, and I'm okay with that. I mean, like, I just don't want to make him or her like, um, I I know nothing in English and I don't have time to tell what is exactly the book that I have read. So you might tell it in Bahasa. Or maybe for one, two or three times, we allow them to speak Bahasa Indonesia, even though we are teaching English. But we cannot force our students like to tell it directly and you have to speak English all the time. But for some times, yeah, okay, you can speak English and for many times you can speak Bahasa Indonesia because you're still a learner and it's still and, and you still have, you know, just basic English. Oh, and I'm okay with that. Uh, it doesn't mean that I'm an English teacher. Hey, Dayang, you're an English teacher and you have to let your student to speak English with you. Okay, I'm an English teacher and I should know what is exactly my, uh, my student's previous knowledge about English. Uh, that's why I, I, I'm trying to, okay, I welcome you, Hafid. Please speak whatever you want to speak. So he, he had better to speak Bahasa Indonesia. For one, two, three days, I'm okay with that. But by the time I'm teaching English, I'm trying to give him a space to speak English with his idea, with his words, and with his sentences, which might be, uh, not everyone knows about that. I'm trying to get closer with him and please speak English with me. Whatever words you wanna speak to me, whatever sentences you wanna speak to me, speak English with me. But it's supposed to be private because not all students like to perform something in front of other students and they become shy just because many, maybe many students like, okay, mm, they, uh, some students like humiliate others just because they have basic English. And I don't want it happened because uh, if, if if my students like doing some intimidating action or maybe humiliated others who cannot speak English well, and I'm afraid their mental will be uh, will be disturbed. That's why. Okay, if you want to speak English to me, my students call me Mama. Okay, Mama, I want to speak English with you, but is it possible to speak for me to speak English with you privately? Okay, no worry, you can sit beside me. Okay, that's what I did. Okay, for another student who can speak English better, so you have to show me in front of the class and that's your stage, okay? That's what I did to my students. Like reading on the spot, make my student possible to speak two languages, both in Bahasa or in English. And I'm okay with all sentences, all words that is spoken by my students. As long as it's positive, I welcome you. Okay, and the other, uh, the other activity that we do, right, with my students, uh, uh, okay, I, I'm trying to accommodate all my students' willingness 
to write with me. So we have activity of write with me. So in every year, my students and I work together. We create a book. Okay, it can be like a collection of quite poems, right? A collection of short story or essay. We did. We do it together, ma'am. At least you or uh, you will be the first writer, and we're going to follow you. Okay, <laughs> no worry about that. Uh, we are talking about that every day. So after school, my student like meeting me in the library and then, ma'am, uh, so the progress of our book is like this, like that. So I'm hearing them, I'm listening to them carefully and then they show me their computer, like their laptop, ma'am, this is the progress of our writing. And I'm happy, my student works for this. At least they told me like this, ma'am, at least you will be the first writer and we're going to follow you. <laughs> okay, and uh, this is it. Uh, I told my student, mm -hmm. uh, what you have to do right now, you have to plan something, making it, making it all happen, plan something, make it all happen because you matter. So when you try to plan something positive, you have to make it all happen and it will show that you are matter. And I told my student, ma'am, it means that now I'm different. Yes, you are different because you have something. And this is what you have to do as a good student. Okay, so um, to write and to produce a book is not that easy to do. And what I did to my student is doing like peer feedback. It is closely related to what Bu Intan has told you before. Some students like to work together to write something and another student like giving criticism giving suggestion and giving a praise. So they're going to have new idea, new knowledge. So their writing will be better. Um, okay, so maybe one student like having a trouble with making or writing a sentence dramatically. So another student is going to give suggestion like, okay, this, it's supposed to be this. For example, I don't can speak English. And another student is going to say, oh, this is wrong. It's, it should be, I can't speak English well. So by doing this peer feedback technique in writing and narrative paragraph, the students like uh, suggesting one another to produce a better result. So uh, when some or uh, when one, two or three students like having difficulties in writing, another students uh, are going to get closer to them and then giving suggestion and then would like to uh, giving some criticism or oh, this is wrong and I should make it better. I should circle that that wrong sentence, for example, and I should make it better. And for the next result, the student is going to revise all the incorrect sentences to be a correct sentence. That's what I did. And then some students also, I told them to like, okay, when your friend has already produced a text, so what you have to do is to give a praise. Oh, your writing is good, but you have to think of writing all your sentence grammatically correct. So just like that giving, uh, giving phrasing is important also, even though the stu another student like reading, oh, my student, oh, Kanita already given me some praise and I should, um, I should revise my sentences to be better and I thank you for that reason. So they're going to like uh, doing some dialogue journal, they giving a feedback one another and for that reason, they're going to produce group writing. And this is like the, the situation that I did with my students related to the how media literacy will work for their life. And then the next one, Instagram caption. So this is what my students like to do. They put their activity, making a short story, they make an Instagram caption and they make like reading, for example, some quotes, they made it themselves, or maybe they took it from other sources. I'm okay with that, at least in daily. Okay, daily, every day, you have to uh, motivate other people. Instagram Instagram is used to, to, uh, to spread positive things, and you have to be the, uh, the author for your own post. I mean, your own accounts, you have to be the author. Uh, can we just say a little, I mean, like writing short sentence, ma'am, but the sentence like, you know, telling our heart or feelings. Okay. But it's supposed to be positive feelings, positive expressions, motivational sentence. I'm okay with that. Just like this is it. Okay. This is the example. 
okay reading makes you difficult <laughs> for example <laughs> makes you different <laughs> no reading makes you different so the more you read the more you think the more you think the more you learn the more you learn the more i realize that i know nothing okay that's exactly motivate others and we're going to discuss it in the in the classroom that this instagram caption will work a lot with our life okay you're talking about this not only like um a telling or updating status but it has no meaning so all your captions should be meaningful as you are a meaningful person and all your words should be meaningful so we're trying to do that and then another another uh activity that we yeah. do in the class yeah okay yeah, it's sorry. almost over time <laughs> okay so, <yeah>. okay <laughs> Yes, 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 thank you. Sorry. Thank you. So move with that. I it's if I just need to complete a little bit presentation. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that's what we did. And then uh, in the classroom situation, we also like to do what is on your mind. So I stand up in the classroom in front of the door and I said, before my student come inside the classroom, I said, What's on your mind? And they're going to tell something. Only one sentence, but I'm, I feel like I'm okay with that as long as it's positive. Come on, get inside the class. Okay. Yes, and then the next one, the findings. So when I this is just the example, example of uh, uh, the 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 classroom, example of the class that I need to ask them what is exactly their uh, their um, their feedback with all action that I did. Uh, I just want to know uh, what is their feedback actually. So it shows like in the percentage. Okay, most of the students really like it because it surprised them. Uh, they said, oh, ma'am, I like a surprising teaching. And every day you always serve us with surprising teaching that we don't know exactly, right? So when we come to your class, we have something new. So <clears throat> what is exactly the point The point here? So all students, especially teenagers, millennial uh, generation, they like something that surprised them. So uh, my students like, okay, uh, if we just write uh, I mean, like reading in the book, and we we are ready. Uh, we welcome you to exp to re-explain it, and we get uh, we get something. But when uh, we read a book, and then you come to our class, and we get something new, it means it's really beneficial for us. And that's what I thought. Uh, giving element of surprise is such an important thing to be given to the students. And this is it. The last, but at least I'm giving the. Hello ma'am, my name is Almelia Hana Gracela Siagian from 1177. Learning about some lyric analytics was amazing. I really enjoy it. Okay, and this is <clears throat> the second one. Go. Hello everyone, my name is Joanna Alavara Jan Sinaga with attendance number 15 and from 11 Science 8. So here I will tell a feedback about this game about the class of women. So I think this game is very exciting and bring out the focus and also honesty. It's not just telling yes or no about lying or something based on the sentence that Indra have been spoken. But it it's all based on our reality too. So Okay. And all things that I have already told you is, is exactly comes from all the right the experiences from the top teachers of the world. And this is the video. And I'm going to share it with uh, in the chat box later because I'm so that the time is not enough. <laughs> I'm going to share you the link. And the link is about supporting literacy for creative instruction. And that's what we did when we are in the Forum of Global Teacher Prize 2017. Thank you so much, okay, for your participation and for your attendance. And I'm looking for the questions and your participation for us to work together, to share, to connect, and to empower one another. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ibu Dayang, thank you for your inspiring presentation, Bu Intan. Okay, my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> so we are in a questions and answer station. If you want to ask uh speaker you may use the raising hand feature so we will choose two uh two participants who want to ask oh bapak wahyu bapak wahyu maybe you can show your video okay you can show your camera on camera 
Bapak Wahyu. Ya, Bapak Wahyu, time is yours if you want to ask. Oke. Okay. Bapak Asep. Oke, okay, Bapak Asep. You can show your video. Oke. Okay. Okay, thank you, Bu. Uh, so I think uh, it was amazing experience and activity in the classroom mm -hmm. because I know that um, yeah, the most of the students are interesting are interested in uh, the activities that given by uh, Bu Dayang, I think. But uh, we know that um, yeah, our um, abilities of our student is different right so they, they have different uh, base of uh, knowledge of english so we have now that uh, they also have different uh, student profile and student, student um what is it um interest i think and uh, different uh, needs also so uh, my question is how buddha yang um know about their um needs uh in in in, in doing uh, activity in the classroom and then um how to facilitate them uh i, I think how to facilitate them uh accurately and effectively i think uh so uh, so that they can um what is it uh, they can improve on a on any uh activities that we uh give unto them i think so that all thank you Oke, okay, thank you Pak Asep. Bu Firda, am I allowed to answer directly or you just need to wait yes, for... Yes, you can answer, answer directly. Oke, okay, Pak Asep. <laughs> uh, what a wonderful question, Pak Asep. I really love it. <laughs> thank you, Pak Asep, for your nice question. Oke, okay, um, to make my student improve and ready to welcome my lesson, uh, first of all, I want them to learn, uh, to learn what exactly my ideas that uh, that is exactly um, placed in Google Classroom. So I told them, okay, this is that we have to do uh, at the meeting tomorrow. So I told them, so you have to prepare this, 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 just like a some tools, some teaching tools <laughs> for making us possible to create a discussion, to create a uh, joyful classroom so they just bring something like they don't they don't know what do we do with this something <laughs> okay i told them to bring pen maybe you bring uh you bring a a uh, like a box you bring uh something which is useless in your house you just bring it to school and i'm going to teach you about something so they just need to prepare the materials to be to be used in our discussion at the next time uh, that's what i exactly taught my students and i give them some reminders like in whatsapp group chat or in google classroom but they actually into uh, they really into the uh, the google classroom and they before i come to their class they exactly uh, follow my instruction oh we have to bring this oh oh yeah Mam Dayang told us to bring this, 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 and they, uh, they prepare together. Okay. So we have to bring this, ma'am. What is the use of, of cardboard? Okay, well, what do we not? What do we need to do next? Okay, so, so they they're really enthusiastic to know what is exactly happening in our classroom next. So I just tell them to uh, to bring this, that. And I facilitate them with something new. Well, uh, it is like um, I I'm trying to bring you to a happy class. Well, you can also have some fun in my class. Not like, uh, not like. Okay, everything is settled. Everything is ready, and you just need to have discussion. You just need to have presentation, and that's what exactly done by the teachers but we're going to play where we are playing we also do some activities where we do some activities we also like to interact with one another and we like to remind one another to be good so it, it is in one package of learning so uh yeah it suddenly happened in my class i don't know uh, uh, what um what i have done but Actually, my student like, man, why, why we only teach? I mean, like, why you only teach us once a week? Why not two times a week, ma'am? Oh, my God, time is running so quickly, and we don't want to miss your class. It's like because I I told them, bring this, bring this, bring this. Okay, and we are ready to play. Bring this, bring that, 
and we're going to show something new that you know before before that's what i did Bapa Asep. and everything that i do is exactly based on my experience when i work together with my global friends we we like to do action we never like uh doing something which is serious we like to play even my friend from palestine okay please pray for palestine right until now it's still like you know okay it's so um tragic and it will, i don't know why when can it stop but my friend uh hanan haru is also a global teacher uh she was the winner in 2016 even though she she was in not in a good condition in palestine but she's still struggling with that she still teach the students happily right without saying that hey hello uh, uh there are many uh, there are many bombs here but come on come on come on come on come on please please happy be happy be happy we we do something we do something that is very impactful for your life come on come on please be happy even though it is still like a, a an area with the conflicts but Hannah still teach the students happily and I should learn from her I should learn from her that to be a happy learning you have to be happy at the beginning that's it passion Wow, that was awesome. Uh, strategic and technique, I think, when you, uh, you know, um, yeah, how to uh, do your approach to your student and then you to be to be their friends and uh, showing your performance, good performance, I think, by smiling, happiness. So I think it, it's, uh, it's the important things that you can uh, interact with your students. So I think they will, they will feel free, I think, to do anything with you because there is no afraid. There is no, there is no what is a fear and then they, they always dare their, their, their self to yeah to engage with you and improve in your uh, activities so thank you Bu Dayak. thank you for your sharing many uh, my pleasure my pleasure okay thank and there's yeah, okay <laughs> <We're done. Anytime. laughs> okay thank you Buda Yang and Bapak Asep so is there any another question Bufirda, can I talk oh. to my previous students? Her name is Arido Vinaya and she's mm -hmm. here. Oh, she's, no, yeah. she's now a teacher. She's now a teacher in Balikpapan. I know her. Hello. <laughs> Ibu Arido. Yes, Ibu. Um... <laughs> okay. On cam, please. On cam. Right. <laughs> on cam. Okay. Thank you for choosing me. I'm sorry, but I'm an Apple. You can show your camera. My camera yeah. is on happening yeah. and my device. Is that okay? Excuse me, am I eligible? Yes, yes, yes. yes. It will be. I'm sorry, man, because I can't open my camera because okay. something happened on my device. Okay, okay. Well, so go ahead. Thank you so much, Buddha Yang and Bu Intan. That's really amazing presentation. I want to. As for uh, Buddha Yang, that it's really, really interesting for watching the video of your students. And even I'm curious about something like how to build the literacy in the school, even for the English one. Because like what I have here in my school, it's really hard for asking the students, not asking, yeah? I can say that the literacy is really, uh, really, really low because there are only some students who come to the library for reading or doing something this or that. But in your school, they come to the library for reading something. I don't know if it is English book or Indonesian book, but it looks interesting and they look so happy for coming to the lab and doing some projects or maybe reading or doing this and that. Yeah, the, for, the my question is how to build that literacy in the school, especially for English one. Because like we know that our general problem for the teachers and the students, especially for the students, is they are really lack, not really, they lack of English vocabularies for the English lesson. That's it. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, move with the, uh, my law to answer the question directly. All right. Okay, Ibu Benny, what a wonderful question. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, at the beginning, it was very challenging, exactly, very difficult to let my students go to the library 
and read some books. It's hard. But when, when I'm really into the activity of reading on the spot, my student like feeling, okay, oh, there, there's a teacher who really let us read him. There's a teacher who really pay attention. What are we going to do in the classroom? Oh, sorry, in the library. So I place myself together with them. Okay, honey, uh, when they are about to go to the library, I'm standing in front of the door. Yeah, and it was the time when I got no class to teach. I went to the library and I'm ready to uh, to work with the reading on the spot program. And I'm standing in front of the door and I welcome them. Hello, what kind of book are you going to read today? Okay, man, I'm going to look for that. Okay, just choose easy book and it will make you easy to understand. Okay, and they're going to find out books in the library they are searching for that finding a thin book <laughs> easy mm -hmm. book so they're going to find out easy is i mean like they uh they ease their thinking and after that they read for one two three pages or four might be and after that i come closer to them so how many pages that you have read uh i read only two pages ma'am so can you tell me what was it about and then they tell me they tell me sometimes they speak in Bahasa or mix English and they sometimes speak English totally. I just let them, I, I just, it just give them freedom to choose whether they want to speak to me in Bahasa or in English. And that's the first start. I don't want to uh, force them like you have to speak English because I am an English teacher. No, <laughs> you may choose whether you want to speak Bahasa or in English. And that's the first start. I'm happy when they are reading. And I'm happy when they can tell me what mm -hmm. is the content of the, the book that they have read. That's for the first time. <laughs> and it was really difficult. And then now it's already three years I implement reading on the spot. And my student was really enthusiastic to do that. And I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy. And it, it it allows me to make a kind of best practice, like practice by. So uh, Alhamdulillah, I was chosen as the uh, 30 best teachers who work for what the inspiring teacher and I choose like making C penny <laughs> right I make like um, a title like C penny which is sumber inspirasi personal narrative essay and they read some motivational books mm -hmm. and they read from that they read some books which is motivational and they write something and I'm trying to welcome them with all they have on their mind and that's what I did exactly well that's no, really good you. ma'am yeah <laughs> even in yeah. my school previously when i come to the school at 2020 school they have a literacy program they conduct a literacy program every tuesday mm -hmm. um uh the the program is like this the students read their favorite book and then they make some resume but it doesn't work so we try to make a different one by compiling modul literacy and numerasi sekolah mm -hmm. and i don't know it really works or not because the objective or the aim or of this book is to make our rapor pendidikan going to be mm -hmm. better than before yes that's why okay. we compile that only used by our our own school because um uh, the team who can build this is like make some text re related to the students what is happening in the students viral or something and some question for the time uh our goal is to make our rapport pendidikan is going to be increased than before i hope it will be come true for our rapport pendidikan in 2024 but I think uh for module at uh, module literacy and numeracy has like a specific purpose for our goal. But I would like to tell your experience to my fellow teacher over there because I'm the one of uh the team of literacy and numeracy in the school. Thank you so much. Okay, my pleasure, Ibu Betty. <laughs> my pleasure. Hopefully so it works. Much to hear the... <laughs> Yeah, Bintan, thank you. Bintan, maybe you can add your opinion about the Denise question. Bintan? 
Ya yes, sibuk. I'm here. <laughs> okay. Um, I thought that the questions is uh, goes to Ibu Dayang ya Ibu Dayang also uh, be honest be honest I'm here uh, get lots of uh, inspiration that uh, hopefully hopefully I can um, implement it step by step maybe yeah because yeah. Ibu Dayang has lots of experiences in line with uh, teaching and learning mm -hmm. so uh, it will be implemented step by step in the classroom hopefully so uh, that, that, that's all Ibu Firda thank you very much okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, well I want to mention a question from Google Form especially for Bu Intan <laughs> Bu Intan Okay, so it's from uh, Bu Diah Indriyati dari, uh, from Yayasan Madania. So, what challenges have you solved when you integrate media literacy into language teaching? What challenges? Okay, thank you very much, Ibu, Ibu Diah. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much, Bu Firda, for uh, reading the questions. Um, the challenges, yes, Ibu. Um, it is uh I, I want to share in line with my experience yeah uh, my own experience ibu maybe from one uh one educator to another it will be uh different uh the challenges happen in the classroom uh, for me myself that uh they are oh, up, uh, absolutely there are several or some uh, challenges face um in the classroom during, uh, not only during, but before and also after uh, uh, implementing the, um, uh, especially for digital literacy, because the topic is digital literacy. So uh, the challenges, the first one is, um, um, I focus is on, um, on the, I'm sorry for the back sound, Bapak dan Ibu, <laughs> my children, the back sound of my children, I'm sorry. Um, so uh for the for the challenges i focus is on uh during the implementation of uh, digital storytelling so uh from step by step uh, especially as mentioned uh, previously on the chat box um the challenges can be seen start from the students uh the students has a brilliant idea i'm sure for that one so uh how we as an educator to bridge their ideas as mentioned previously by Budayang to a positive uh, positive story <laughs> to create a positive story uh, although uh, we although uh, I'm, me personally do not have uh, do not give burden for the students they can do what they want creatively but still uh, actually still has this is a positive or not to be uh, to be presented uh, so we, we still have uh, that um, the uh, we we still need to hold that one that opportunities so the first challenge is that one to bridge um, especially the topic the students choose uh, in the beginning because the topic is the the main the main of the uh, the main of the story before they create their uh, story map and also they produce their uh, uh, a set of uh, uh, or their digital storytelling. So the challenges is that one to bridge. Uh, the first one is to bridge um, positive uh, to bridge the positive uh, words in line with the topics chosen by the students. And the second. Uh, it is in line with the, uh, although we, we know that the students are in the digital native, so one of those, uh, one of them still face that miss which one is, uh, which, which media or which application that, uh, that, are, that are easy, easier to be used to create them. So what kind of example uh, that they really need the lots of example, actually. The story, Patrick, what are the stories of Patrick? Nah, they watch the, actually, at, in uh, behind the story or behind the scene, they watch the story of Patrick, uh, Wayang, or we, we talk about that one, Cepot, yeah, <laughs> not Cepot, yeah, I mentioned previously. Uh, yeah, so the second challenge is related with the, uh, the chosen of media that that's actually 
back again uh, based on the student's preference, uh, which uh, which application that can be used. So they have their own um, uh, authority to choose uh, the application. Uh, two and the last, <laughs> the last is the, um, uh, how to bridge, how to um, how to not make sure, but uh, the challenge is on when they uh, work collaboratively to share their ideas and how they to cope all the ideas. Ah, ah my ideas is good. The Patrick is uh, um sorry. The the main the main character is not Patrick. I thought the main character is this one. No, no, this one. So ah, I I I thought the uh the the story is go to this now um I, i'm happy to hear uh their ideas but again uh we do not let them go <laughs> to uh to to them to debate all the time but uh um i only as a facilitator to okay which one from this this and this so which one do you prefer that uh, this is better for your uh, story so that's the three challenges that happen uh, because i'm also still learning to uh, to face or to give the ideas for the students uh, my or my partners in the classroom so um, uh, I can share the three challenges that already faced uh, while I implement uh, the digital storytelling. Thank you. Thank you, Bu Intan. So it's so inspiring, yeah, for me, especially as a new teacher. Literacy is very important, and yeah, we should reach them and engage them to be more active in literacy. Well, thank you so much, Buda yang Intan and Bapak Ibu to end our session. Um, I'd like to invite everyone to take a picture. <laughs> As usual, you take a picture. So I will um, screenshot from the first slide until the last slide. Yeah, so everyone, would you like to open your video? Show your video. Okay, show me your best smile. Okay, everyone ready? One, two, three. First slide. Okay, next slide. One of us. <laughs> okay, one, two, three. Okay, the third slide. One, two, three. Third slide, please. <laughs> okay. So, one, two, three. Okay, okay and the last slide, please. Yep. So, Bapak Ibu, um, we would also like to express our gratitude to all of you for your participation and interest in media literacy. We believe that the information presented here will be beneficial to all of us. We hope that this webinar has inspired you to take action towards your goal. So thank you so much for today's session and uh, we appreciate your time and I hope that I can meet you again in another session. Thank you so much and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. See you again at the next Class Creative Editors webinar. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you so Thank much. You bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. You. Bye. Bye. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Bu Thank, Thank you, Bapak dan Ibu. Thank you, Bu Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Ada Mbak Thank you Budiana, Pak Ivan. Thank you ya. Can I leave this room? Yes, Ibu Daya. Can I leave this room? Thank you so much. Ibu Firda. Oke, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ibu. Intan, bye bye. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Bapak dan Ibu, Ibu Firda. Thank you very much. Thank you.